Welcome back. I'm just giving you an update on this chassis here. Um, I uh, spent most of the weekend looking for parts. Um, <laughs> so uh, that was kind of futile. But um, what I was going to say was uh, I've been playing around with that uh, Evapo Rust stuff, and it may be for Rust, but it certainly does a lot more than that. Uh, I think. The next time I do a chassis, I'm going to try to do uh, what I did before, which is on the back, it, it says, you know, soak it in some paper towels and place it against uh, whatever the rust is on, you know, something that's too big to dip, I guess, uh, or something like this that I'm not going to pull apart. Um, anyhow, because uh, that one little corner I did over here, I mean, it took a while, it took a couple of hours, but it, it worked pretty well. and. Uh, the problem was that when I cleaned over on this side here with the navel jelly, you know, I left it on for just a, you know, maybe five minutes or ten minutes. And then I, you know, wiped it off and everything, and, and this side was fine. I did this side, and then the phone rang. So I ended up leaving it on probably for 15 to 20 minutes, and when I pulled it off, this side here was completely discolored. It wasn't such a big deal in the past because, um... You know, the other chassis that I've had, I had intended on painting to begin with because they were so rusty. Um, anyhow, so I had a, you know, good uh, 30 minutes yesterday and I quickly sprayed this. Uh, there was about a, like I said, about a 45 minute to an hour window where I had sunlight and no wind, even though it was 42 degrees. Uh, but uh, spray paint is a little more forgiving than lacquer. <clears throat> it was a bit of a hurried job, so it's uh, not my best, but, um, you know, lo and behold, I was also at the store, and I was trying to figure out, well, I didn't like the satin uh, nickel, and I didn't like, I mean, the titanium, I think that's the color I got, I had, the, the, the other color that I tried, the real sparkly one, um, that one was okay, but it was rough, so I had to use clear over the top of it, and that came out really nice on the 624. And then, you know, I got to thinking, well, geez, why don't I just put, try, you know, basic silver? And uh, sure enough, it came out pretty nice. I, you know, it's, I, I didn't want to paint it. But I didn't really see much of a choice when it was all black and, and uh, gray and splotchy over on this side. So, anyhow, the dirty deed is done. And uh, another thing, uh, I was able to clean these... Uh, of the aluminum up with uh, evapo rust. Another thing, interestingly, was the uh, Filco, the um, electrolytic, which is now a little maraca. <laughs> uh, I soaked, I wrapped this up in a paper towel. I don't know if you can see how shiny this is. Not only did it do absolutely nothing to the uh, Filco printing, uh, but it actually pretty much looks like one that just came out of a box. I mean this is a new old stock Sprague and this is the Filco. It looks pretty much the same. Um, this is a slightly duller but I would assume that's from etching from years of corrosion. And uh, just so you guys know, I know, I just, I know that Sprague made Filco's caps because if you look at the top of these, I don't know if you, let me see if I can they have the same patent numbers on them, <laughs> so I am just absolutely convinced that uh, that's who made their their caps. Um, anyhow, so uh, the other reason, the other thing is, I discovered why they. In case you hadn't noticed this already, some of you are rather observant. Uh, the reason why this was left on is because it's a floating ground. So here's the. Uh, I guess these are f fiber. Um, because they're not cardboard, they're some sort of a fiber board, so anyway, I'll be putting that back on when this stuff hardens up a little bit more, although with the silver paint, it's not like that, that's another thing with that titanium or whatever color I used the last time, that was, uh, an oil-based paint, and that took two days before you could even, you know, before it wasn't even tacky anymore, so, um, this stuff is pretty much hard already, um, after I cleaned the transformer cap, it had a little bit of, of uh, rust on it. I thought, well, let me just go ahead and give it a shot of uh, the same 
automotive enamel that I've been using on my other ones, which is uh, just the Rust-Oleum engine enamel. Um, and <laughs> I've never had it happen before, but uh, it managed to um, bubble the paint below that was already on there. So I said, okay, fine. So I put stripper on it this morning. Um, and in fact, I just now rinsed it off. The citrus strip did nothing, almost nothing, to the cap. I'll show it to you. So that means I've got to put it outside with some, uh, whatever the stuff, MEC stuff is, because this is all that it took off. Um, <clears throat> that's it. After sitting there for 12 hours, that's all it did. And the only reason why it took this stuff off the top is because this is what bubbled up. Uh, when I sprayed it, so I should have just left it alone. Although there was a little, like I said, there was a little rust up here. This part up here came off uh, when I soaked it in the um, when I soaked it in the uh, evapo rust. There was rust underneath the paint, and so it took the rust off, and so the paint fell off as well. So anyhow, uh, I'm gonna have to hit this with the MEC and. Um, uh, outside, obviously, uh, and hope it doesn't eat through my table or <laughs> through the aluminum and pie pan in the table. So I will be spraying this again. I don't know when because uh, I've got probably a good th four, well, Thanksgiving's coming up, so it may not be until next weekend. And I didn't even I don't think the weather forecast went that far last time I checked. Uh, another interesting thing is uh, you may or may not remember how yellow this was. These parts were. I soaked these in uh, the evapo rust, and the all the um, cadmium corrosion just fell off. Um, the top of this was rusty, and it's no longer rusty. Um, where? Oh, there it is. Look what it did. Uh, same thing with the tuning condenser. It's it actually did a better job on the tuning condenser. Than <laughs> I hate to admit this, than my ultrasonic cleaner. It's now shiny and new. Uh, there's a little bit of staining left, but um, you know this is really smooth, so I'm just going to leave it alone. Um, put a couple of drops of oil in here and call it a day. And I'm assuming that this is one of our... Uh... Oh, I forgot what they call these capacitors. Anyway. Um, I'm assuming I can just go ahead and put a little piece of orange wire on there and, and duplicate this. Uh, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and keep working on... I'm going to redo the switch assembly first uh, before I head it out under here into the abyss of uh, rubber wiring. Um, although with this one... Uh, I can just replace one wire at a time and then quickly turn it back on to make sure it works. Um, no, I'm kidding. There's a, there's a lot of room under here, so uh, I should be okay. Um, I won't replace... I'm, I'm sure I'll get to all of it, but I will stop and test it periodically when I do. Um, I made an order with uh, Radio Days for some wire. I'm just going to go ahead and braid my own for the this. Um, I'll be ordering from my new best friends over at Grand Brass who have the cloth covered wire that's actually I like it better than the sundial. Um, let me go grab some and I'll show it to you. They offer more colors than sundial does and they're cheaper. Uh, quite a bit cheaper actually. Um, I think I paid a dollar a foot for this stuff, so um, this will be my positive. I should have ordered the wine. They have a dark wine, um, and uh, I just ordered the bright red, and of course it's a little brighter than I like, but uh, I just happen to like this a little bit nicer because um, the sundial wire comes with uh, basic brown wire, and this actually has a white and black. It's not that big of a deal, but it uh, saves me from having to look for the little tracer on the one brown wire and it's cheaper so hey uh, the other thing oh and then uh, but their plugs are a little more expensive I think 75 cents more so 
you know, it's kind of six of one, half a dozen of the other. I got the black cotton wire. I got a bunch of it because actually, um, I'm going to use this for the power cord for the uh, 3812. I had never ordered it, so I ordered, uh, I guess, 15 feet of this and then 7 feet of this. So, anyway, there's my positive and negative for the 624. So that's where I'm at with this radio. Uh, oh, and I um, I rewired the lamps. Uh, two of them use the uh, little bit better style, I think, of um, socket, like the older radios did. Let's see here. They use a, a, a plastic centerpiece and they use um this one happens to be shield uh yeah shielded but um and they also use a back piece on this so these ones are actually fine and the the wiring is good on them so i left that alone same thing with this one here um it doesn't have the oh it doesn't no it doesn't have the back piece but it's got the better quality uh washer in there and uh, this one's still good too uh, wire looks like it wants to split, but I think it's okay. I'm trying to remember where this goes. Oh, this is the uh, the one that goes here for lighting up the the uh, the dial uh, the push buttons, and uh, this is the one that goes to light up the state uh, band indicator. So what I did rewire was the front panel light here and um, of course now that I've done all this what I did was I got some nylon washers number six I left that bag out so I wouldn't forget and then I picked up which I cannot find now but oh well so you can see they had some nylon sleeves now these nylon sleeves um, you know I took what this socket actually with me these nylon sleeves slip over the uh, inner piece nice and snugly so um, anyway that's good and so I did uh, that one and then both of these that had the rotten red wiring and they were you know canary yellow uh, again evaporust look how nice and clean they came so these are good to go um, I got a little squirrely with that knot there, but I've never all been that good with knots. Anyhow, so uh, these are nice and springy now uh, with their little nylon washer inserts and uh, soldered up nice. And plenty of wire, which I shouldn't be wasting, but I bought a 50 foot sp uh, spool of the red because I kept running out of red. So, anyhow. That's where I am. I'm going to uh, actually, probably, I guess I'm going to put the tuning condenser back together and on here. Um, I also spent way too much time looking for this uh, little piece of reinforced rubber, and I've given up on it. I just don't want to spend any more time. Like I said, it was working. It still works. It is petrified, but, um, you know, it's not like, uh, I don't think I'll be doing the rumba and, bump, do, and bumping into the radio or anything. Assuming that this is for vibration. Um, I didn't really have a whole lot of choices. I went to a couple automotive places and I looked online. The issue I think, I, the last issue I had before I just finally gave up was that this is 330 seconds uh, thick, two ply. So I was trying to get, you know, I, I would settle for neoprene or, or uh, SBR. Actually, neoprene was cheaper. And the only place I found that would had it was Granger and funny thing in California Granger sold to the public in Texas they do not so screw them and I'm just gonna move on anywho so <clears throat> that's that and um, thanks for watching and I'll give you another update when I've got uh, the switch assembly done and some of this partially reassembled Thanks again, and if I don't make a movie before Thanksgiving, have a great holiday.